Hey guys, Zot here. With Phase 1 being well underway and Phase 2 bringing the much awaited honor system, PvP is going to take the forefront for most people. And with the abundance of PvE pre-raid BIS lists out there, there just isn't any information for PvP pre-raid BIS gear. So welcome to exactly that. We cover stat priority and then look at what piece of gear you should look to be obtaining along with where and how you get them. In today's episode, we're going to be taking a look at Hunters. Hunters are amongst the strongest classes when it comes to open world PvP. The ability to kite both melee and casters alike give them a unique advantage. High damage and great forms of crowd control with freezing trap and concussive shot makes Hunters a force to be reckoned with. Not to mention their ability to drain mana from all casters with their very frustrating to play against Viper Sting. Before we get into gear however, let's take a more in-depth look at what stats you should be prioritising as a hunter when it comes to PvP, as often your gear and also stat priorities differ greatly from what you would normally take for PvE. For this video, we've built this BIS list around the standard hunter spec of 0, 21, 30. Okay, so stat prior is going to look like this. Now, simply knowing your stat priority is one thing. But knowing why you take these stats is what help you easily decide what gear you want going forward in terms of upgrades. First up is Hit Cap. Now, Hit is extremely important in all aspects of WoW, and PvP is no exception to that. Missing an ability at the wrong time could instantly cost you the fight. And to take that out of the equation, you're going to need to reach 5% hit rating. Hunters are lucky in the fact that they get 3% hit rating from the talent Sure Footed, so are only required to pick up 2% from gear in order to reach that 5% hit cap. Second on our priority list is going to be Agility. Now this is Hunter's primary stat, and Agility provides attack power, critical strike chance and dodge. For example, 53 Agility will grant you 106 attack power, 1% critical strike chance and also 1% dodge chance. This makes agility one of the strongest stats to stack as a hunter, as you're able to obtain vast amounts from your gear and even get increased amounts from the talent Lightning Reflexes. Next is going to be Stamina. Now Stamina is your main defensive stat when it comes to PvP. Most classes want a mixture of both their primary stat whilst also not neglecting Stamina. Stamina is vital when it comes to PvP. The more health you have obviously means the longer you're able to survive the enemy. However, with Hunter's case, often enemies are unable to touch you, so agility gains a little bit more of an edge. However, Stamina is still extremely important. One Stamina equates to 10 health points. After Hit, Agility and Stamina, the next most important stat is going to be Critical Strike. Critical Strikes in Classic PvP are 200%, and Hunters even gain more on top of that, with the talent Mortal Shots, increasing Critical Strike damage by up to 230%. This means if you're getting crits on your aim shots, enemies are going to be taking absurd amounts of damage. Also, in PvP, often the more burst you're capable of doing, the stronger you'll be. Consistent damage usually takes a back seat. Now, attack power is simple. It increases the damage you deal. The damage of all your abilities and attacks are based off your attack power. But agility is just simply better all around, as you get two attack power per one point of agility. Whilst critical strike is more bursty and stamina is required in order to just stay alive. So you can see why attack power is this low on your priority list. And our last stat you should be on the lookout for is going to be Intellect. Intellect just simply increases your mana pool. Hunters require mana in order to use a large portion of their damage in spells and abilities. So not having any Intellect will just mean you end up running out of mana in PvP situations and then just become useless. Alright, so with all of that in mind, let's take a look at the best in slot gear you can get right now for PvP. Bear in mind this is pre-raid phase 1.5 gear, so includes all of the dungeons including the newly released Dire Mole. But to remain up to date with this list, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Starting with Helm, we're going to be using our first piece of the Beast Stalker set, which we're going to also be using the shoulders, 
boots and braces for. This set is perfect due to his mixture of stats and strong set bonuses. The Helm contains a huge 20 agility and stamina whilst also having some nice intellect to help with mana issues, whilst the shoulders have a high amount of stamina and agility once more, again with minor amounts of intellect, and the same goes for the braces and boots, just good base stats all around from this set. This set is great due to its high amounts of base stats and huge emphasis on both agility and also stamina. As we're using 4 pieces of this set, we'll be picking up the set bonuses, which are 200 armour, which is great for some extra defence, and also 40 attack power, increasing your base damages. To get the cap, you're going to have to clear the Scholomance dungeon, as it drops off the final boss in the dungeon, Dark Master Gandlin, whilst the shoulders are from the final boss in Lower Blackrock Spire, Overlord Rimfalak. The boots, however, are from Strathholm Undeadside. Dropping off Naruban Khan, one of the three bosses guarding the ziggurats you need to clear in order to reach the final boss of the quarter. And lastly, the braces are the drop from the trash on the undead side of Strathholm once again, but are also bind on equip, so can alternatively be purchased from the auction house for a small fee. Moving on, we've got Neck up next, and for this we're going to be recommending the Will of the Martyr, 10 stamina and a huge 30 attack power. This neck gives us a huge bonus to survivability with that extra stamina, whilst also providing a huge amount of attack power for overall damage. To get this one, it's going to be off to Strathholm. First, you're going to need to clear the living side, all the way up to the final boss. Just before his final room, you'll find a small room with Malor the Zellius inside. Kill him and in the corner, you'll see a chest. Loot this and inside will be the Medallion of Faith. After that, return to the undead side of Strathholm near the side entrance, and you'll find a chapel. Inside will be an NPC named Aureus. Give the medallion to him, and then you'll be required to kill the final boss of the undead side, which is of course Baron Riven Dare. Kill the Baron, and you'll be rewarded with this neck. Cloak's going to be up next, and for this, we're going to be looking to pick up the Emperor's new cape. Huge stamina and some added agility. Great passive stats and a perfect cloak when it comes to PvP. Drop in from the final boss inside the Blackrock Depths, Emperor Dagran Florisan, at about a 20% drop chance. Chest is simple, and for hunters, there is no other chest when it comes to either PvP or PvE that even comes close pre raid, and that's going to be the Savage Gladiator's Chain. 13 strength, 14 agility, and even 13 stamina, with an added huge 2% chance to critical strike. This item is insane for its level, and is something you'll be using for some time. Achieving it is going to be no easy feat, however. The Savage Gladiator's Chain is elusive for being an extremely low drop rate, as it comes from the Ring of Law inside of Blackrock Depths, commonly known as the Arena. Despite that, it's actually not too hard to target farm. With arena runs being a popular thing, you can reach the arena in less than 5 minutes, with the gladiator's chain having about a 10% chance to drop from Gorosh the Dervish, one of the 6 potential bosses inside of the arena. Moving down to gloves, we're going to be using another set, and this set is pre-raid bis for pretty much every melee, with hunter being included, which is going to be the devil sar set. The stats on these pieces are great high stamina, attack power, and some critical strike on both pieces, in varying amounts. But the main selling point of this set is the 2% chance to hit. Hit is incredibly hard to come by pre-raid, and this set gives you 2%, and as we covered in our stat priority, hunters are only required to have 2% in order to reach the cap of 5%, thanks to Sure Footed. The Devil Star set is crafted by leather workers, with its main cost coming from the 22 Devil Star leather needed in order to create it. Devil Star leather is achieved from skinning the heavily camped and controlled Devil Star inside of Angoro Crater, meaning the best way to achieve this set is going to be simply purchasing it off the auction house for quite a hefty fee. Alright, so next up we're going to have Bao, and for this we recommend the newly added Warp Wood Binding, high agility and a decent amount of intellect and stamina, and even 1% crit, helping to make the most out of your mortal shots. To get your hands on this amazing bout, you're going to have to head, as mentioned, to Dire Mall, where this bout drops from the first boss inside of Dire Mall West, Tendris Warpwood. 
Alright, that's all our armoured covered. Now it's rings, and our first ring we recommend is picking up the Pain Weaver's Band. Now this is best in slot for almost all melee, both PvE and PvP alike. This ring is incredibly strong, 7 stamina, 1% critical strike and even 16 attack power, perfectly itemised for a hunter in PvP. To get this you're going to have to complete the upper Blackrock Spire 10 man dungeon and clear up to the final boss, as it's a drop from General Drakisaf. And of course you have two fingers, so our second ring is going to be the Band of Flesh, a crazy amount of stamina and also a small amount of strength and agility. When it comes to PvP, this ring is great for enabling you to live that bit longer. Drop in from Ramstein the Gorger, the penultimate boss inside of the undead quarter of Strathholm. But if you've got the funds, a better ring than Band of Flesh is going to be the Mimridon Signet. This ring is basically just the same ring but with better stats. But is a bind on equip world epic drop, so can set you back a fair bit of gold on the auction house, but heavily worth it if you have the funds. Moving on, we've got weapons. Weapons for hunters are basically stat sticks, as when you're in melee range, you're going to be looking to get out as quickly as possible. And the best stat stick, also known as a weapon, you can get for PvP is going to be the Bone Slicing Hatchet. 13 agility and 5 stamina. What else is there to say? Our two preferred stats in high quantities, and you're going to be wanting two of these. Coming again from the undead side of Strathholm, like a few of the items from this best list. From one of the three bosses guarding the ziggurats one more time, this time it's going to be Maleki the Pallid. And last up before we get to trinkets and most importantly we've got our ranged weapon, where pretty much all of your damage is going to be coming from. And for this we're going to be looking to pick up the Carapace Spine Crossbow. Slow speeds, high top end damage, this crossbow is incredible for PvP. Not only that but it also again has our two preferred stats coming with 9 stamina and 4 agility. Well, you better like Strathholm on dead side, as this crossbow again comes from one of the three bosses guarding the ziggurats, the same boss we got our boots from, Narubin Khan. To pair with this ranged weapon, you'll also want to get the Ripley's Quiver coming from the Blackrock Depths. And finally, last on this list is trinkets. Now, trinkets in Classic are a little different. There are a huge amount of trinkets you should have on you at all times, and because of this there isn't really any best in slot trinkets you should aim for. Instead, look to collect as many useful utility trinkets as you can. So things like Tidal Charm, all of the engineering trinkets including Netomatic, Frost, Fire and Shadow Reflectors, Nifty Stopwatch, Carrot on a Stick, Barrow of Peasant Caller, Arena Grandmaster, the list just goes on. These trinkets all have very long cooldowns and are also very situational, so make sure you get as many as you can and keep them in your inventory, ready to swap around as required. However, with that in mind, there are two trinkets that are going to be good for every situation, and those are Blackhand's Breadth and the Royal Seal. Alright then guys, that wraps up our pre-raid PvP best in slot phase 1.5 for Hunters. Now we're going to be keeping these up to date with the phases, so make sure to check back once phase 2 hits for an updated best in slot list. And as always, be sure to please like this video and subscribe to our channel for more up to date content.